two clubs are under the microscope because of how bad they are going. Hawthorne and North Melbourne sit winless after five games and meet in round six. A big opportunity for both to put a win on the board. We know the media has spoken about the struggles of West Coast, but as discussed in the video in the top right, things are actually going okay at the club. The Eagles themselves have declared they are rebuilding, but Luke Beveridge during the week said this to the media. Each week, trying to win the game is absolutely important and critical. The rebuilding term is a myth. You cannot rebuild in our code and our competition with the constraints that exist with the draft and the salary cap. Rebuilding infers that you're knocking something down and it's coming from the ground up from a new origin. You just can't do that. He might be the first coach ever to come out and say this. Getting back to the Hawks and Kangaroos, according to the Western Bulldogs coach in his statement, their full bottom out strategy is impossible to get success from. So does it mean they will be bad for a whole lot longer? And if so, how can clubs rebuild on the fly to challenge while still staying competitive? Specifically looking at Hawthorne and North Melbourne, both clubs show the risk attached to cutting ultra deep through your list. For the Kangaroos, we can even go as far back as 2016. Drew Petrie, Brent Harvey, Daniel Wells, Nick Del Santo, and Michael Ferrito all left at the end of the season. It's a whole lot of experience out in just one off season. But how does this relate to the now? Well, since that point in time, North Melbourne have been bad. 2017, 18 and 19 were middle of the table finishes, but without those senior players listed before, where was the passing on of the knowledge and senior player leadership? Todd Goldstein, Jack Zebel have been the only two who lasted in the 2020s and now both of them are gone. The full plan to rebuild began in 2020, but years before this, the cutback of those senior players who have such a big influence on and off the field for a club left a big gap. It means everyone coming in is extremely young or in their mid-20s because as we know, most clubs don't trade in 30 plus year olds. The young players are actually fine for North Melbourne right now. It's the senior players who are a core issue. Luke McDonald and Jai Simpkin are the captains, while their quote unquote experience is Aiden Core, Liam Shields and Luke Davis Uniac. If you put up North Melbourne senior players with everyone else's, it becomes clear why they sit at the bottom. Young coming in for old sounds good, but handy veterans and great leaders make a monumental difference as we are seeing with Elliot Yo, Jeremy McGovern and Tom Barras at West Coast. Hawthorne bring up other issues when culling your list. They did ship off Tom Mitchell, Jager O'Meara, Liam Shields and Ben McAvoy retired. Sam Mitchell came in as coach and clearly set the direction of where the club was heading. A pretty intense rebuild was ahead. So like North Melbourne, Hawthorne did decide to get rid of a large portion of their experience, but last season, with those midfielders out, they were one of the best clearance sides. It was the bookends of the field which let them down. Now for 2024 specifically, Hawthorne have been dealt with a rough injury hand, so they do get a bit of a pass to start the season. But it's drafting which we can focus on with the Hawks. You do get high picks when you decide to rebuild, but you have to nail them with little senior support. 2020 saw the Hawks take Denver Granger Barras at pick six, who has struggled in the AFL. Josh Ward was selected at pick seven in 2021, and Cam McKenzie was taken at pick seven in 2022. Now Ward and McKenzie have been okay, but are similar types of players at this stage and neither have stepped up in the midfield at AFL level. Now looking at all their draft picks from 2020, Connor McDonald pick 31 in 2021 and Josh Weddle pick 18 in 2022 are the two standouts. So for right now, only two out of 18 players taken in the national draft between 2020 and 2023 are having a big impact in the AFL. 
when this is the case, then guys like Jai Newcomb, James Warpool, James Sicily, and other 25-ish year old guys have to play lights out like they did in the back end of 2023 to compete with the best. When they drop off in form, you can't do much to change up the team because the other players drafted on the list aren't ready enough for senior football. If Hawthorne did have a 90% fit squad, I do think they would be better than their current 0-5 record. So if we combine the two current day examples, a few things become clear. If you decide to get rid of your older players, especially ones that are still contributing on the field, it not only hurts you with the physical strength in your 23, but also with teaching and guiding young players off it. There is a reason teams like Sydney and Geelong are always good. When you have players like Luke Parker and Dane Rampey at the Swans leading the club, and Patrick Dangerfield, Tom Hawkins and Tom Stewart at the Cats, there is a clear correlation between having strong veterans and being a winning team. The strength aspect specifically was noted by Clarkson himself after North Melbourne lost at the Cattery. They were just uh, bigger and stronger and more polished um, around, around congestion and they said, you know, they had Hawk out of their side, they had Danger out of their side, they would have helped them in that space too. So, um, yeah, we know we're at as a, as a footy side. We, uh... The next aspect is with drafting. You have to nail most of them. When you get access to the best, then you have to pick the best player available. Now it's never this simple, and it is a two-way street. 100% the draft is compromised because of the academy and father-son system. So I sympathize with both clubs because neither have had access to players like Nick Dacos, Sam Darcy, Jamara Eugle Hagen, or Will Ashcroft. But both North Melbourne and Hawthorne still decided to attack the draft aggressively as their main strategy. Now I think the Kangaroos have drafted a bit better than the Hawks, but Will Phillips and the Jason Horn Francis saga has still cost them. It's tricky to draft because of its nature and the rules, and looks even riskier when you go all out. But with all of this going on, there is still light at the end of the tunnel. No AFL club besides maybe Gold Coast has been bad forever. Things will turn around and it's normally just a matter of time. But if your AFL club wants to rebuild, then maybe they should try to regenerate on the run instead. It worked out for Collingwood and we are seeing it with Geelong this season. Now doing this is easier said than done, but maybe the future strategy clubs go with if they believe they can't contend in the now. Comparing North Melbourne and Hawthorne with say Geelong and Collingwood is the first key is making sure your older, experienced players stay around. Pendlebury and Sidebottom are no longer required to be superstars, but can still play a solid role in the team and show their flashes of brilliance when required. If a club has three or four of these type of guys, then keeping them around for a bit longer may help young players in the future while keeping them competitive on the field. Now with drafting, being specific is important. Hawthorne or North Melbourne have clearly gone heavy with the midfield selections early with their picks, and it's left both sides with weak key position stocks. As a list management team, you have to evenly draft across the field. And when you mix in that some draft years don't have good tools, or others have say no forwards, it's why putting all your eggs in drafting high is difficult. Will Phillips instead of Riley Thilthorpe or Logan McDonald, or Sam Butler instead of Toby Conway. There's seemingly little differences, but make an enormous impact on a team's structure. With the draft itself, I wouldn't be flicking away good role players for second round picks anytime soon, as the compromises in the system make it impossible to get access to everyone, which was noted by Luke Beveridge. Being mediocre can feel worse than diving headfirst into a rebuild, but maybe it is actually better for the future. You can still clock up wins while slowly blooding youth in the team and making sure everyone is developing. I don't think this is a knee-jerk reaction to North Melbourne and Hawthorne's current situation, is even Adelaide have struggled to re-emerge and without trading in Jordan Dawson and Isaac Rankin will be far worse off than where they are now. 
That's why seeing where West Coast and Richmond head will be interesting. I have a feeling the Eagles, seeing the form of their veterans, won't be so quick to get rid of them. The Kangaroos and Hawks also may be a strong warning to Richmond, who seem desperate to keep Liam Baker, while continuing to play the senior players who are fit, while slowly adding in young players in their starting 18 here and there. Beveridge is wrong in saying that you can't rebuild, because you can do whatever you want as a club in terms of your strategy for moving forward. But he may be right that in this day and age, it is far from the optimal solution to regenerate. North Melbourne and Hawthorne will eventually get out of this and be fine. However, with free agency, the salary cap and draft system, clubs deciding which path to go down might be avoiding the dreaded rebuild in favour of a far less aggressive list strategy.